All right. Once again, welcome everyone to the CDP Disclosure uh, webinar and how to improve your performance in 2021 by our, uh, by Southpole. My name is Trevor. I'm one of the regional marketing managers here today. And before I introduce my uh, to introduce the speakers of today, I have to talk to you about how to improve your performance in 2021. I'll quickly uh, walk you through the house rules. Um, you might have noticed that you've, of course, been muted on, upon joining. If that's not a problem at all. Please just submit your questions via the question box. They're welcome at any time. Um, of course, if you need any technical support, please put them in the chat and we'll aim to resolve them ASAP. Um, if you have any topic related questions for the discussion, there is a Q&A at the end. Uh, please submit it in the question box. We'll make sure to answer uh, all the questions. If we don't get to every, every, one, every question, we will get in touch via uh, email. Of course, uh, a lot of us are broadcasting from our homes. Please, please, wear, please be bear with us in case of uh, technical issues. Uh, but this webinar will be recorded and we'll share the link with you afterwards. So you can always review it uh, in your own time. Um, so it's my great pleasure to give the speakers of today the stage. Um, Christian gevers Dijnoot, Senior Sustainability Advisor at Southpole and Owen Smith, CDP expert at Southpol, who will walk you through the ways to improve your CDP performance this year and of course beyond your sustainability journey. Christian? Thanks so much, uh, Trevor, for the uh, kind introduction. Uh, much appreciated. And uh, welcome again to, to everybody on this webinar. Uh, we very much look forward to the coming 55 minutes and uh, we'll hope uh, we have enough time for you to answer questions as, as Trevor indicated. So please, really, we, uh, we do ask you to, to put some questions forward uh, throughout the, uh, the, the webinar and uh, we'll address them at the end. So let me just uh, first dedicate a few minutes to explain to you, you know, what uh, Southpol is really all about, so who we are and why we are well placed to, to actually give this, this webinar, if you haven't found out uh, yet. So if we can go to the, to the next uh, slide. Uh, what you will see here is that uh, Southpol started about 15 years ago, uh, a little bit less. Uh, a couple of guys uh, at the Technical University of Zurich uh, realized that uh, they wanted to um, help set up climate action projects uh, or emission reductions projects around the world uh, and um, accredit them in order to uh, have those credits uh, sold. Initially, it was a non-for-profit uh, company or organization and later on turned into a for-profit uh, company, profit for purpose, if you will, uh, under the name of, uh, of South Pole. Well, by now, I mean, our roots, roots may have been in uh, uh, project development, but by now we have grown into a full suite uh, sustainability consultancy operating globally and have received numerous awards uh, for, for many of the, uh, the services that we uh, provide. Um, I think what is important to note, though, is that I think uh, we have not forgotten our roots uh, either. I mean, they are still very much uh, on the ground. Uh, which is why we are and still we still are the largest uh, developer of climate action projects uh, globally. But we do operate uh, across the world, right? So uh, we have a reach uh, that now spans uh, almost all the uh, well, practically all the uh, continents, um, in uh, in about 26 offices and representations. Uh, and so it means that you now, even though we are headquartered in Zurich. Uh, we are present in almost all markets, so that means that we can be there with you on the ground as well as in your 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 in the boardrooms, if you will. Uh, and so uh, I think that is very important to say because um, you know we don't uh, lose sight of, of of who we are at the were at the beginning and and the communities and the partners uh, we work with uh, on the ground. Uh, at the same time, if you look at the ecosystem of of partners, I mean this is just a, a small selection, of course, of, of various companies and financial stakeholders and, uh, and, and project uh, uh, standard uh, developers and non-for-profits uh, around the world. But this is just to say that we are so much more than a business-to-business -business consultancy. I mean, we work with governments around the world. We work with international organizations and development banks. We contribute technical expertise and help develop new methodologies together with standard setting bodies. In fact, I mean, uh, about the topic of today, when it comes to CDP, we were their scoring partner in, for example, uh, the period 2015 to 2017, 
on the water security and forestry uh, programs. Uh, and that is also why today we are one of the few uh, CDP accredited uh, solutions providers. Uh, and, and I think that that truly gives us legitimacy to, to speak about this topic uh, today. So let us turn now, having done this short uh, uh, promo talk, uh, please forgive me uh, for that. Uh, and let us turn briefly to the agenda, which is you know, what you came here for, of course. Um, what I will do first is set the stage a little bit. Huh? What, what is the business case for, for CDP and, and how can it help you? How can it help you on your climate journey or as you will find out later on, on your competitiveness uh, journey. Then I will hand over to Owen, uh, a resident uh, CDP uh, expert, um, who will tell you a little bit more about how CDP can be used to accelerate your ambition, to highlight gaps, engage internally uh, your, 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 your peers and, 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 and management as well, and, uh, and to kickstart ultimately your journey to, uh, towards net zero, which is ultimately, let's be honest, where we all need to go to. Then we will dedicate a bit of time uh, to uh, the water security and forestry uh, disclosures and some of the you know, lesser known uh, questionnaires uh, amongst the three of, of, of CDP. And finally, um, uh, Owen will tell you about uh, uh, how we can support you with your CDP uh, closures, uh, disclosures. Uh, I will indicate uh, through a case study how we have done that uh, in the past with uh, Atsea, an Italian uh, multi-utility uh, company uh, before ending uh, with a couple of minutes on, on, on our climate journey and how we view uh, CDP reporting and disclosure in the wider sustainability efforts of, uh, of a company and how you can boost your performance uh, in that regard. So I hope everybody is ready to, uh, to get going uh, and, and, and let's first maybe spend a little bit of time reflecting uh, on this, this question. So how can CDP truly support your organization's climate journey? Well, my first answer would be to not see it as a reporting exercise, to see it rather as a competitiveness tool, right? I mean, it's clear that the world is no longer debating the need for non-financial or sustainable non-financial uh, data uh, being reported and disclosed by, by companies. And we all know that it is actually a critical step towards driving corporate climate uh, uh, ambition and action, uh, and that it is demanded by you know, not only co customers and, 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 uh, and investors worldwide, but increasingly also, also governments uh, and, uh, and peers, if you will. But the fact of the matter is that you should not do this for them, for any of them, really. You should first and foremost do this for yourself. You should see it as a tool, that's how we see it at least, a tool to identify opportunities to enhance your competitive advantage, to really uh, become more competitive. And that's also what Angela Merkel, uh, well known to, to all of us, uh, said so at, at the recent CDP awards. I mean, you can read it here. I, I hope you have done so already. Uh, as she says, this is a tool you can leverage your CDP reporting and disclosures to drive competitive sustainability, to find new opportunities and develop new products on the basis of the, the innovation that it, uh, that it unlocks. Uh, and, and, and you will find later on in this presentation how you can do that uh, specifically. Um, I think important just uh, before we delve into sort of the, the seven key ways that we have identified to leverage CDP, uh, um, is just to say one thing. I mean, there are multiple reporting and disclosure frameworks around. Today, we are focusing on CDP. We also believe that CDP is one of the, uh, the most important ones. And why is that? It's because the kind of uh, framework it is, uh, it's, it's that it's set up in line with the most authoritative international standards and impact calculation uh, methodologies. And that in, in return makes the, the CDP reporting framework itself uh, one of the most authoritative frameworks uh, around. So how can you then leverage it, right? So what we have identified, th these are seven ways, if you will, or, or themes actually, uh, around which, uh, or in the case of which you can leverage uh, a CDP to, to, to enhance ultimately your, your competitiveness uh, position. Uh, and they are sort of the, the, I guess, direct ways of, of, uh, of how to leverage it. And you will find in a moment how you can also indirectly do that. Um, so we have differentiated between the internal and the external. So if you look 
at, uh, at the internal, right? On the one hand, there is the best practices. So, so CDP, uh, they, they score, they evaluate and score uh, the sustainability performance of thousands and thousands of companies uh, uh, each year. And that means that they can also um, include uh, in their uh, questionnaires the, uh, the most uh, sort of, uh, I guess, best practices um, regarding a variety of activities that, uh, that you need to undertake as part of your sustainability uh, activities, ranging from target setting to uh, uh, physical risk analysis uh, and various other uh, commitments such as uh, renewable energy uh, commitments. They've integrated these best practices in their questionnaires and by using or answering these questionnaires, it therefore becomes a guide for you to actually uh, orientate yourself towards those best practices. But also the internal processes, right? In a way, I mean, the questions they will ask you about, for example, your, your the, the level of your greenhouse gas accounting uh, across all three scopes and, and the level of detail and granularity, if you will, uh, that uh, that is included. And for that as well, there are clear authoritative uh, guidelines or protocols to take into account. Um, by using CDP, you know the, the, the extent that you have actually complied with those kind of protocols and, and, and standards. Uh, and in that sense, it's a kind of, you know, an accounting uh, tool as much as anything else uh, as well. But it's also a governance uh, tool, of course. It's about uh, uh, the kind of, it will ask you about the processes that you have put in place to identify the risks and opportunities that would uh, come about with uh, uh, physical climate change across a wide ra range of, of, uh, of scenarios, uh, as well as regulatory changes that come with it. And thirdly, in the internal space, uh, we're talking about planning, right? Or CDP actually is talking about planning. Uh, and it will ask you whether you have taken account uh, in your, your planning of potential changes that may come about in the future. Whether you have taken account of the fact that you need to engage with other stakeholders in order to uh, improve your, your, your performance. And whether you have established the kind of emission reduction pathways and set the kind of targets that are in line ultimately with the kind of impact uh, that you as a company should deliver uh, when it comes to your, uh, your position uh, in, in, in the market. If we then look at the external phase, so beyond the fence, uh, if you will, and there are a couple of obvious uh, ones here, but it's, it's easier to just you know, to say that they are relevant than it is to actually leverage them, right? So on the one hand, there's the reputational side of things. I mean, society and investors, they, they can reward sustainability progress only if they are able to scrutinize it. So by taking part in the framework, by letting your performance be evaluated and scored upon, you can also reap the rewards of your efforts. Um, and similarly, uh, or related a bit to this is, is that you can reap the rewards of your performance in relation to other companies in your sector, right? I mean, only once you take part in the scoring exercise alongside other peers or, each, or even peers that do not take part, there is a benchmarking possibility uh, for external players uh, to look at, at, at where you are in that, uh, in that list, if you will, amongst your, your, your peers. Then there is the transparency part. I mean, let's be honest, any, any company that is serious about its sustainability uh, transition uh, should also be serious about, uh, you know, willingness to, to, to be transparent about those activities, to, to, to publish the, uh, the information on uh, the progress that you have made and to, and to be scrutinized on the basis of that. Uh, that in itself is, is a measure of, of, of transparency and of, of, uh, of commitment. Uh, and then we reach a bit to the, the, the last point. I mean, taking part in this framework is a signal that you are not only ready to be scrutinized, but that you are ready uh, to, to transform and to, to position your company in uh, ultimately uh, the world uh, of tomorrow. So that is on the direct side of things, right? So but there is also the indirect consequences of CDP reporting. Um, the fact is that uh, this framework does not exist in isolation or in some kind of vacuum. On the contrary, it is highly connected with a wide range of other kind of reporting frameworks, uh, sustainability index, uh, in this indexes, um, and, 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 and target uh, setting uh, schemes. As you can see here on the left uh, hand, I mean, there's clear overlap 
uh, between the, the TCFD guidelines and the CDP uh, reporting in a, in, a, in a range or a large part of the uh, the questionnaires, which which Owen will, will talk to you through uh, a bit later on. But there is also the science-based target uh, initiative, for example. If you want an A score as a company, you need to have a science-based target. Otherwise, you will never reach a, you will not get a CDP, uh, an A score from, uh, from CDP. Uh, and also setting a renewable energy target in the RE100 scheme gets rewarded in your in your scoring under the uh, under, under CDP. Well, on the right hand, briefly, just a, a mere statement here is that CDP data is actively used by a lot of these kind of uh, financial and investor platforms and indices. It's fully integrated into that. So you reap benefits not only in a direct way, but also in an indirect way. And it's important to be aware of, uh, of that. Well, we have advised, as Sapo, as I've said already at the beginning, a huge range of, of, of companies across uh, all sectors in the economy, really. Uh, and uh, I mean, they obviously relate to the three uh, questionnaires and, and, and in particular three different uh, services that we have uh, pro uh, provided in, in the past, often in a more integrated fashion, accompanied by more strategic advice uh, as part of larger sustainability advisory mandates, if you will, uh, as, as I will indicate uh, towards the end of, of, the, uh, of, the, uh, of the presentation. Um, but let us now turn to really what the questionnaires are a little bit about, and, uh, and I will gladly hand over here to, uh, to Olga. Over to you. Thank you so much, Christian. Many thanks. And um, so, yeah, I'm now going to talk through how really CDP and the process around it can, in practice, help your company to accelerate its environmental ambition. So, on the next slide, there, um, it's important to to really take a strategic approach to this process. So, it should be a, about a lot more than a kind of merely disclosure box ticking exercise. I think, as Christian has already well uh, articulated, and it's a really good time to reflect on your overall strategy and um, also your resilience to climate risk. And by taking that kind of a strategic approach to the CDP questionnaire, it can enable you to lay the foundations, uh, firstly, for buying, uh, getting internal buy-in for more ambitious climate projects, um, and also time to form the, the basis of whatever is going to be kickstarted next. So what uh, we've put on the slide here are just a couple of very high level tips um, that we would give you to ensure you get the maximum value from the CDP process. The first one is to use CDP as an annual barometer of your climate performance or strategy. Um, and this is because CDP's questionnaire evolves year on year. It's always aligning with the, with the latest science. And so it means then that um, you can really evaluate how your climate strategy stacks up against best, best practice. So when you receive your CDP score, you're also going to receive a CDP score report. Um, and you can use that to understand you know, where the gaps lie. And we would recommend also doing that um, aligned with TCFD and the, the core areas of the recommendations, governance, strategy, risk management and targets and metrics. I'm going to talk a bit more in detail about those shortly. The second point here, then we would suggest forming a kind of cross-functional working group. We think this is really ideal to be done at the outset of your CDP response drafting. Um, and that's because you know having a really robust response to the questionnaire is going to require inputs from a wide range of, of functions and departments in your company from operations, risks, procurement, finance, as well as, of course, that buy-in from senior management. So if you set that uh, group up at the outset, it will make your life a lot easier for the data gathering, for the drafting of response, but also um, to plug into the wider strategy. And if you have that group formed, it can accel uh, accelerate the business conversation um, and ensure that that internal buy-in for action is, is really strong. And then on a kind of related note, the third tip here is really to use the momentum from CDP to kickstart that next initiative. So when you submit your questionnaire in late July, that it's not just put away in a file and forgotten about, but rather that's a great opportunity to regroup. And um, as I said, you've probably got the buy-in and even the sign-off on the questionnaire itself from someone very senior. So leverage that engagement and really push for um, whatever next project that's going to be. Is it a science-based target? Is it a net zero strategy scenario analysis? Whatever it needs to be in your company's case. So the next slide then, um, moving on, we have developed a kind of model or framework here which works as a, a strategy stress, stress test really, um, trying to help you understand using the CDP questionnaire as a framework where, where the gaps lie in your current strategy and we've identified key action areas to take here to 
to address those risks or, or gaps, I should say. Um, and you see the way this, this framework is set up on the left hand column, it's the CDP module. Then uh, the next column over, it's these key uh, stress test questions, which are kind of taken from the questionnaire more or less. And then I think that the more, most important column is the, the next one over, the action plan one. And then just to note, we've, we've mapped this to, to, this, to the TCFD recommendations. Um, as I said, it was in 2018, CDP fully overhauled their questionnaire to ensure alignment with the TCFD recommendations. So it's really great to, to be aware of those alignments so that you, you can use the information you're gathering and disclosing through CDP to also you know, integrate into your main financial reports to ensure that they're TCFD aligned. So I won't go through every single piece of this in detail, um, but I maybe would just highlight a couple of key areas here. So firstly uh, is governance. And I think Christian did mention the importance of governance and clearly having it as the first module there, CDP recognizes that too. Um, and the questionnaire asks you to review your climate governance structures and it's a good opportunity for you to assess, are they fit for purpose? So for example, does the board really have true oversight of climate risks and are key decisions being made at that level? Even are there monetary incentives tied to some of your, your targets that's increasingly um, in place in, in leading companies? So yeah, it's a good opportunity to reflect here and, and we have one action plan um, that I'd like to highlight there, which is to develop or form a TCFD or, or a climate task force, a dedicated one that operates maybe throughout the, the year, not just in, in relation to CDP um, as a kind of governance mechanism and making sure that there are there is uh, senior buy-in for that kind of a task force. The next area um, is area two, risk, or module two, risk and opportunities. I think anyone on the webinar who has filled in a CDP questionnaire is aware that this is really often the meat of the questionnaire and companies may struggle really to have company-specific information to provide on, on risks and opportunities. Particularly on, on the risk side, what we would recommend doing is undertaking a TCFD aligned scenario analysis and um, that will really help you to uncover that kind of <clears throat> detailed information on such risks as well as their potential financial impact and it usually will give you a big leap forward in your CDP scoring and, and also your overall TCFD alignment. The other thing is of course to ensure that anything that comes out of an analysis like that is integrated into your business strategy um, and really is going to inform uh, what you know what business decisions are made looking ahead. So on to the next slide then, um, in module four, we have targets. Um, and you know, firstly, this is looking at whether you're, you have a target in place. If so, is it science-based? Of course, I think we're, we're all becoming very familiar with the science-based targets initiative and that it's kind of changed from best practice to be now just expected. Um, but also being able to demonstrate that you didn't just set a target, but you're on track to achieving that target. So needing to have a detailed roadmap across all of your scopes is important here. And I do want to highlight that this year there is a new question in section four on uh, net zero targets. So um, as, as Christian said, that's the goal we should all be working towards. Um, and of course, South Pole supports many companies in that journey. But I think the crucial thing to underline here is not just having a net zero 2050 or even 2040 target, but you need to have concrete interim milestones in place too. And then, on to the next slide, I'll just highlight one more area here, which is um, engagement. So on C12 there, um, this is because I think companies are increasingly aware that they're embedded in, in value chains and that a lot of, obviously depending on the industry, but a lot of their impact may lie um, outside their direct operations. So I think a recent study found that scope three emissions are an average 11 times higher than direct emissions. So companies really need to be measuring those emissions and reducing them if they're to reach their, their overall net zero targets. Um, so in this module, you know, you're asked about whether you're engaging with customers, with suppliers, and depending on, on where the kind of bulk of your emissions impact lies, one group may be more important th uh, than another for you, but say it is in that supplier category in the purchase goods and services, you can and probably should be engaging with them to collect primary data in order to accurately measure your scope three emissions and then drive reductions there. And, and that's what this part of the questionnaire really uh, drives forward. So moving then on to this slide, this just takes things up uh, a level really and um, provides more of an overview. So it, it, it's again organized uh, with the four TCFD recommendations um, and it's just, has helped, you know, if you've gone through that process of 
using the framework I've just shown to evaluate, you know, which areas you can you know, answer a question in a satisfactory way versus where you're lacking. This could be a, a type of output you would get from doing that analysis. Um, and what it becomes immediately clear and something you could kind of bring to management is that say here in this case, risk management needs to be worked on. So that would be maybe where some kind of scenario analysis uh, could take place to, to address that. So moving then to the, the next section, um, we're going to look beyond climate change and instead focus on the topics of, of water security and forest disclosure. Um, because climate really has had the spotlight for, for many years now, um, probably the, you know, the best part of a decade that the companies have, have woken up gradually to the to climate topic, but definitely have. And it's really only more in these recent years that uh, water security and forests are becoming topics of importance for stakeholders, be they investors or, or regulators. Um, and I think there's an increasing awareness of the interdependency of these three topics with one another um, and how companies can, can impact on those. So first, looking at water um, and why companies should take action. Um, there's some statistics here on, on the slide which are, are fairly shocking. You know, the first one saying that we're projected to have a 56% deficit um, in, by just 2030, so really not so far away. Um, and then I'd also just highlight the, the fourth one that um, CDP has found actually that there, there's over 400 billion US dollars of business value at risk from water uh, events. So these kind of risks could be of various types. Companies can be exposed to physical risks due to, to water like droughts or floods, um, or even the financial impact such physical risk incurs. So, insurance premiums are going up because of those increased um, natural disasters. But there's also regulatory risks. Um, there could be water withdrawal limits. There can be increasingly actually regulations also on, on the quality of water discharge. And then there's reputational risks too. So consumers are, are starting to wake up to this topic and, and beginning to even move away from businesses which do have water pollution practices. So for all these reasons, there's been a steady increase in the number of companies responding to the CDP water questionnaire over the past years. It reached almost 3,000 companies last year. And um, so on the next slide, then I, I just look at a bit more specifically CDP's water security um, topic. And their, their questionnaire provides quite a logical framework for action. Um, it allows companies to, to work through and understand the, the water security journey they're on and then you know, have this opportunity to communicate that to their stakeholders. And it does address both the topics of water quantity, but increasingly water quality. This year, there's some new questions on treatment of water discharges. Um, and the, the questionnaire structure is, is nine modules in total. So it kind of assists you to think through, firstly, how is your company dependent on water currently? Um, is there exposure to water risks or on the flip side opportunities? That's both now and then into the future. Um, and then how would I or am I responding to such risks and opportunities? And um, so I'm not going to go through the whole questionnaire in detail, but you may, may have noticed already that the kind of pattern that this, this questionnaire also um, has alignment with the four TCFD modules of governance strategy risks um, and targets and metrics. So some, some key kind of focus areas within the questionnaire are water accounting. Um, you're asked for withdrawals, discharges, et cetera, by source, just for your at-risk facility. So you are first asked to, to deem what you would consider to be a facility at risk. And then any of those that, that do fall into that category, you will need to give that detailed water accounting data. Also risks and opportunities, similar to the climate change questionnaire, it's a very important module. Um, and then the last one is more about strategy and policy. You know, uh, increasingly best practices include setting internal price on water as, as you know, a kind of similar model to a, an internal carbon price. So the next slide then, uh, I'll be moving over to the topic of forest. Um, and I think we're, we're probably aware by now that preventing deforestation and improving the management of existing standing forest, forest is really crucial uh, for the fight against climate change. And companies have a really pivotal role to play here because they need to ensure you're not buying commodities that are linked to deforestation or driving deforestation. And globally, the loss of tropical rainforest has really increased um, been increasing exponentially and a lot of that is driven by the commercial production of these four commodities that are listed on the on the slide so palm oil cattle soy and timber 
and these four commodities are used as ingredients or components in a very wide range of, of industries and in everyday products some which we're probably very well aware of but interestingly you know it's not just the industries that you might immediately think of like food and packaging that that these um, commodities are relevant for but also you know deforestation risk can be found in more surprising value chains like the cosmetics or pharmaceutical industry because of the use of palm oil or even in the automotive industry because of the use of leather in in cars so the cattle product there so it is crucial that companies um, build awareness of any potential commodity uh, driven deforestation risk in their supply, ch supply chain if you're a listed company it's quite likely investors might already be talking to you about this um, and the cdp questionnaire uh, gives a, a company an opportunity a bit like with water to to walk through the process of where they currently stand on the topic you know where their gaps lie um, Companies would just report on the commodity or commodities that are relevant to their own operations. So some companies might just report on one or two. You know, there's a couple of very large companies that are reporting across all four, but it's tailored to your own industry. Um, and it, the questionnaire also has, has nine modules in this case, similarly has the TCFD module alignment. Um, and some of the key kind of topics that it, that it delves into include uh, traceability, certification, um, strong corporate policies and, and I think very crucially for forest is supplier engagement. So just to, to sum up on the water and forest piece then, um, of course many company strategies in this area aren't as mature, they're a bit uh, less well developed than the climate side, but um, as described earlier in the webinar I think that's where doing the CDP disclosure exercise can really help to further your strategy because it's it really clearly indicates where your current gaps are. You can bring that internally, get buy-in, and make the kind of case for, for action in these areas. And Typo really has, has worked quite closely with, with companies on the CDP side of disclosure on, on water and forest, but also just we have very strong expertise in this area and can be seen in our, our growing agriculture value chains practice. So we're very ha happy to help you kind of get started on this journey if that's relevant. So then, Moving on to my final section, which is on how Stipole can support you as in relation to CDP specifically. So um, turning first then to look at the, the timeline of, of the disclosure cycle this year. Um, by now, many of you might have actually already received a request for disclosure this year for 2021. That could be coming from either your investors or your customers. And um, as well, the CDP questionnaires and actually the finalized versions of the scoring methodologies we would be published on the website and it's april 12th which is the key date that that's when the system the online response system where data is actually inputted into the questionnaires opens but you have right up until july 28th uh, to actually submit that questionnaire um, and one thing to just note here is kind of linking back to the whole narrative i think is that you know the work doesn't end there and we would really recommend that you use the rest of the year um, wisely to boost your performance and, and tackle those projects that are going to help you improve your disclosure the following year but just to, to highlight as well what's on the below the timeline here a couple specifically of the um, services we can offer so on the next slide i um, detail the first of those which is gap analysis and this consists of an ex examination of your previous year's CDP response um, and we would help you to you, doing that um, review or examination to find the gaps in comparison to the requirements of this year um, and this also I think includes what I think is really really useful uh, a benchmarking element and um, because there's such great opportunity of learning from what your peers are doing and because uh, with CDP uh, a lot of most companies really which are responding do so publicly that it enables this benchmarking aspect of the service too so that can help you to identify areas uh, for improvement and then yeah we help you identify those gaps and then work with you you know to prioritize which of those could actually be addressed for this year which are longer term projects um, and the deliverable in this case is um, a report format and we would go through a call with you as I said to outline what can be done short medium and long term and the exercise usually takes about one to two weeks so then the next slide just shows you another service which I'd like to highlight and that's the scoring simulation and it takes place later on in the disclosure cycle so let's say you've had a gap analysis and you've gone off and really done your homework and understood 
what improvements can be put in place imminently and, and you've integrated those into this year's response. And then later on, we can work with you to, um, before you submit the, the, the questionnaire, do a kind of simulation of the score. So we'd apply this year's 2021 CDP scoring methodology um, and we'd estimate the, the score range based on, on what you're going to submit. And we would prov provide as well here some, some comments in a, in a PowerPoint format to kind of explain that. Um, and this can also help you to understand any potential effects of actions you might be planning on the longer term basis, like I mentioned in the gap analysis one. So throughout both of these services as well, because Dipole has a lot of familiarity with the CDP ways of wording and, and how, you know, what's best practice by uh, in answering a questionnaire. So things like not leaving blanks or selecting the correct question pathway based on your own company's actions. So we can really make sure that you're doing those and um, setting yourself up for success. So then on my last slide here, I did just want to delve into some of the questionnaire changes for 20 to 2021. 2021. Um, the first good news is that there aren't too many. So I think people will be glad to hear this not some kind of big overhaul to the questionnaire this year. Um, as the, the pie charts depict, the vast majority, 90 plus percent of questions are remaining completely unedited this year. There's a, a small number that have minor changes. So that's usually a slight wording change or a different drop down option included. But the ones that I think you should take note of are the new questions. Um, in the climate change questionnaire, the, the key new questions are on firstly, um, a low carbon transition plan. So increasingly, it's clear that companies need to have a, a plan in place for how they're going to operate in a profitable manner in a low carbon transition. And actually what this question asks is um, whether your organization's low carbon transition plan is going to be a scheduled resolution item at your AGM, because it seemed to be best practice to have shareholder actually vote, shareholders voting on the plan and, and leading companies are already starting to do it. Um, and it's really helping your stakeholders that you report to via CDP, be that investors or customers, and um, seeing whether you have this plan and, and if so, if it's being voted on helps to really assess you know, to what extent is your company taking seriously its commitment to aligning the strategy with the, the, Paris, um, the Paris aligned future. And so there's another follow up question to that part, which is if you don't have a, a low carbon transition plan in place, it asks do you plan, do you intend to have one in the next two years? So that might be relevant for a lot of companies here that don't yet have it, but you know, you do see it as something that needs to be done and you can then answer uh, to, the, to that question. So then my very last point here is just on the other big, maybe star of the show new question, which is on net zero targets. And um, obviously these have just become the North Star. And so CDP is including them in this year's questionnaire. Um, and you're asked to provide details on the targets um, and they follow the definition of net zero provided by the SBTI. So in a nutshell, meaning that the net zero target has to be comprised of two elements. Firstly, your science-based emission reduction target. And then secondly, your uh, carbon removal target, which is just to neutralize any emissions that can't be abated. So the question is going to ask you about the target coverage. Is it you know, company-wide or just certain divisions? Um, do you have an absolute or intensity mid-term mid target linked to it? And that's what I was saying earlier on about this need for interim concrete milestones on your journey to net zero. Um, so yeah, that's I think the note I'm going to leave things on. Net zero is a, a good one to keep top of mind and, and hopefully um, what I've gone through there was helpful for this year's 2021 CDP disclosure. So I'll hand back over to Christian now. Super. Thank you so much, uh, Owen. Uh, thank you so much for all the, the, the great level of detail uh, here. Um, I mean, if we now put theory a little bit into practice, uh, I mean, I'm aware of the time, so, so I was just want to present you a brief case study of an important client of ours that we've been working with for the past two years, uh, Atea, which is an Italian uh, multi-utility uh, group. And um, I think if we can go to the next slide, what you, what you will see here is that our counterpart, uh, what we have done is we have worked with our counterparts, sustainability manager at, at ATSEA, uh, to uh, ultimately try and use CDP as a way to uh, uh, unlock and 
internal engagement across all layers of the organization and put in place the kind of governance processes that can unlock some of the opportunities that we have been uh, discussing throughout this uh, this presentation. So what we have done, I mean, I'd say I was already consistently scoring very well on, on, on CDP, but what we have helped, I'd say I do, is, is put in place a kind of framework to ultimately improve its score even further to, to A minus from, from a B, and, and, and enable, I'd say, or at least our counterparts, to pull in um, people from across the company that ultimately are needed to achieve that kind of score. So that means both people at an operational and at a, a management uh, uh, level. And you will see here below some of the steps that we have taken in that regard. Uh, this exercise ended with a, a kind of a round table, internal round table, if you will, kind of dialogue that included uh, some of the uh, yeah, people at the highest levels of, of ATSEA, where we discussed the CDP score and, and what it meant for ATSEA uh, in terms of its own uh, performance, and what could be done in order to, to achieve a higher score in, in the next year round. And this unlocked a uh, ongoing dialogue, as you will see in the next uh, slide, uh, that enabled a kind of, I guess you could call it an iterative process of uh, improvement or a virtuous cycle of improvement, if you will, by um, using CDP and the governance system that was created sort of in line with it um, as, as a means to uh, have this dialogue continuously uh, taking place and involving all those various uh, stakeholders. Uh, and it was made um, very concrete as, as uh, in the form of a climate task force, and this is what Owen already alluded to or mentioned earlier on in the presentation, that a governance in this regard is, is really critical, and this is also what CDP gives very high scoring uh, for. Uh, but what it does as well is that this is a way to actually uh, unlock these opportunities and, 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 and make it part of, of a company's business strategy, ultimately influencing that, uh, that strategy. Um, I would really invite you to look at this case study in a bit more detail once we send the, the presentation to you uh, afterwards. But suffice to say, if we go to the next slide, uh, is that um, yeah, what we have do started doing with Atsea on the back of that is actually help uh, Atsea to, to put in place uh, those kind of um, well, processes uh, that are needed to improve its score. And one of them is, uh, for example, um, to, to help Atsea build capacity to perform a physical and transition risk analysis uh, inter internally over time uh, to be able to, uh, to do its proper TCFD reporting uh, and gain the kind of scoring under the CDP that is in line with, uh, well, with an A score, an a, a solid A score that you want to have uh, ultimately. So just, this is just a brief, this was just a brief highlight of, of a case study. Again, please look at it at, afterwards and, and, and happy to, to address any questions, of course, uh, uh, if we can. So let us now maybe finally turn to, uh, before we open up the floor for, for questions, to, to how you can boost your performance uh, aside from, from some of the things that Owen already uh, mentioned. Because, um, I mean, ultimately we, we want to make it as tangible for you as possible uh, and that you can improve uh, on the one hand your score, but also leverage uh, CDP scoring uh, for, for more. So we just want to do a quick poll here. Uh, to, to understand how uh, companies, or how at least the audience here, uh, is already using CDP disclosure processes uh, internally. And you'll see here four different answers. Uh, uh, it is viewed as a disclosure exercise with little engagement. Data is used in reports, but little C-suite or, or board level engagement. Data is used in reports, and the board is engaged. Uh, or uh, even further, CDP is substantially integrated into the sustainability strategy. Uh, we'll give you a moment to, to vote. Yeah. So I hope by now everybody has uh, had the opportunity to to indicate its uh, the way that organizations are, 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 their organizations are using it. And what we see here is that actually the far majority are using it for their sustainability reporting, but do not have a lot of C-suite uh, engagement. Actually, the, 
the, the, the, the so there is some advancement in the sense that it is clearly not just used as a, as a, as a standalone disclosure exercise. So that is, that is very positive. But I'm sure there is quite a lot to gain there, as, as we can see in the last the answers uh, to um, for the last two responses. We can help you with that. Uh, I guess that <laughs> that speaks for for itself. I mean, uh, let's be honest. We 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 uh, of course, as I mentioned before, deliver a wide range of services that can help you boost your your CDP performance and ultimately. Uh, yeah, unlock those 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 competitiveness uh, opportunities. And what we have done is this is just a, a quick overview, where we have organized uh, some of our services across various modules that are in line with the CDP questionnaires, and they range from uh, putting in place the kind of processes required to measure your uh, climate-related risks and opportunities, to on the one on the other hand to to, to set the kind of science-based targets that are rewarded under the CDP or to uh, do your greenhouse gas emissions accounting in a way that is according to the authoritative standards and protocols in place, to put in place a renewable energy strategy, uh, or even go beyond that and, 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 and have your internal carbon pricing mechanisms uh, in place to improve your, your, your performance uh, and, and, and also to, to purchase uh, offsetting credits where that is uh, possible and, and, and acceptable under under the CDP uh, report. And finally, of course, there's an engagement piece there also related to your supply chain partners. But we can help you with that because we know that this is not a walk in the park. And for none of it, none of us it is really. And, and, and yeah, which is why, as you will see in the next slide, uh, which is why you know we view this exercise, the, C the CDP reporting and disclosure exercise as part of a wider journey. I mean, we call it the climate journey but in reality, if I if I reflect on it now, I see it more as a sustainable competitiveness journey. And these are some of the high-level steps that we see in that regard. Uh, and they, by going through these steps on a continuous basis and use the CDP reporting and disclosure exercise as a kind of hook, uh, on the one hand, to um, yeah to 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 look into your own performance. But at the same time, once you receive the score, score also as a moment of reflection, you can ultimately uh, yeah, improve your, your sustainability, not alone, but also your competitiveness and your competitive advantage uh, in the market. And uh, yeah, we will be gladly uh, helping you with, uh, with that, of course, that goes without saying. So let me now hand over finally to, uh, to Trevor for, for some uh, concluding words and, and uh, any questions that, uh, that may have been raised. Uh, yeah, thank you, Christian and Owen, for this uh, very informative uh, session. Uh, we're going to move on now to the Q and A. And before we uh, uh, dive into the, the the that, the audience is of course a bit of a mix. Some people have reported into the CDP, others might have not. So, of course, the first question that came up in the group is: Is it even possible to respond to such a CDP questionnaire if you haven't been requested to from the uh, from the organization, Owen? Yeah, happy to take that one. Um, it is it is definitely possible to respond even if you haven't received an explicit request. So the way the requesting works is um, most companies do receive a request either from investors, that's if they're generally listed companies, or sometimes from their customers. So this is through CDP's supply chain um, program. Um, however, if you haven't received either of those, but you would like to respond, that's absolutely possible. Actually, we, we see it fairly often that companies do that because as um, Christian laid out, there are a lot of benefits to responding. So I would recommend getting in touch with CDP um, and they should be able to set you up. I think there's a small administrative fee to do it, but uh, yeah, anyone is welcome to respond. Thank you. Um, Christian, another question that was also posted was that, um, of course, you can combine a lot of things on the climate journey, but when you're looking at CDP, can it be used as a means to start talking about SPTs, TCFDs, how do you relate those kind of um, terms and uh, developments to CDP? Yeah, no, of course. Uh, I think, I mean, as, as I mentioned a couple of times, uh, for us, the way that we see it really is that the exercise is a kind of um, opportunity uh, for you to look uh, into your own organization through the glasses that are provided by CDP. So it's like a guide, if you will. 
And by going through that those questionnaires, you will see what is actually lacking at this point in time when it comes to your sustainability performance. And so one element that will be indicated is indeed that you should set a science-based target if you are serious about your sustainability activity. Why a science-based target? To make sure that your climate action target, your emissions reductions target, is in line with the latest climate science plus the kind of impact that you as an organization have on, on, uh, on climate change. Uh, so yes, indeed, it is a, a, a guide and, and that is very much how we would uh, recommend uh, any company to use it. Uh, and maybe then a follow-up question for Owen, because uh, it says here that TCFD becomes a legal requirement and SPT setting becomes mainstream. Why should you continue CDP uh, disclosure? Aren't you doubling efforts? Maybe something uh, worth discussing as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think so. I think there's two, two parts to really unpack there. Um, maybe first looking at the science-based target setting and to kind of make it clear how that differs from any kind of reporting because that's just setting a, a target for a future year and saying that our uh, emissions are going to reach a certain level of reductions by that year. And actually the SBTI um, is now, I think, increasingly asking that companies report their progress on their target. So are they going to or have they been achieving um, those reductions that they projected they would achieve? Um, and they want that to be reported through a kind of standardized system like CDP. So if you set a science-based target, then definitely um, there is still need there for that kind of reporting through CDP. Then when it comes to the TCFD side of things, so TCFD is a, is a framework, really. It's a, a way of communicating information as opposed to being a platform. So you should use TCFD structures to integrate the information into your own financial reports because really it's about putting a price on, non, um, it's non-financial information, but putting a price on things like climate risk. Um, but what, what we're seeing most companies do is respond to CDP um, using the, the modules that align with TCFD. And by answering those questions, they actually have a lot of the data that they need to then integrate into their financial reporting to be TCFD aligned. But the reason companies still do their CDP reporting is because of the, the data users on CDP's end. So as I mentioned, it's investors um, and or customers of your company, um, like other you know, purchasing organizations that are using that data, uh, and they're using it for a range of purposes. So investors, for example, are increasingly creating products and services um, using, sorry, I shouldn't say services, products or funds, let's say, uh, based on CDP data, as the slide Christian showed early on. So if you stop responding to CDP, your, your company may not be included in those, especially if um, they often look at, say, companies that score above a C or a B, they get included into some kind of green index or fund. So there is still kind of additional benefits to doing CDP, also because CDP is more comprehensive than, than TCFD. Um, TCFD, as, as I showed you, has these four modules which uh, are in the CDP questionnaire, but it goes beyond that and has other things like energy um, or supplier engagement, which, as I mentioned, is really important for the scope three element. Yeah, speaking about supplier engagement, of course, um, as a company, you're never alone. You're never alone. Uh, you have a lot of suppliers engaging and emitting a lot of uh, 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 emissions as well. Um, the question here is, uh, should we require our, the most of the material scope three suppliers also to complete the CDP questionnaire to respond, it, respond to, to create our response as well in a good way? Um, so it would depend a lot on, on the company, but that is definitely one way of going about it. And CDP has set up a, a CDP supply chain program whereby your company can become a member and then request its suppliers to submit their own uh, often smaller uh, minimum version um, questionnaires and then you get access to the data they provide meaning you have that primary data to feed in and calculate your own scope three so yeah that's definitely one way of doing it and um, kind of depends on your existing relationship with the suppliers um, how easily you can gather that information from them, but of course, using the CDP framework to do so is, is very effective. All right, and then when you've used all that framework and you've, well, you've, you're the sustainability manager, maybe Christian, can you take us through 
regarding the sign off on the CDP. Is it really, does it really make sense to involve all these C-suite uh, people or should we just be focusing on the sustainability manager getting all that internal buy-in? Yeah, no, of course. I think that's a very valid question that uh, I'm sure that Owen could could respond to, respond to in terms of sort of what is rewarded in the scoring. I mean, that is clear. It is rewarded in the scoring if you get a high level sign off, right? Board level sign off. But it's not only about that. It is also about the fact that by involving them, as you saw briefly with the case study, you can unlock budgets. You can unlock uh, greater action internally because what is pointed out by involving board level members uh, is to them where the gaps are internally in terms of your sustainability performance. And by pointing those out and the risks and opportunities involved with that, those gaps, you can, uh, uh, you, can, you can apply for, well, ultimately more funding to take more action and become more ambitious. So for any sustainability manager, we would you know, highly emphasize even, I cannot say it any other way, that they involve their uh, board level uh, uh, colleagues, if you will, um in this in this process and put in place a kind of governance system that is structural that is ultimately um yeah ultimately in the form of a kind kind of a task force that uh, can take this forward as well as other exercises i don't know Owen, if you have anything to add to that i think you you articulated that very well yeah i think for those exact reasons cdp does award with the higher score um if you get a c-suite sign off on your questionnaire Right. Well, on that note, I would like to end the Q&A. If we didn't get to your question, we'll make sure to get to uh, the unanswered ones via the email. Um, I'd like to thank Christian and Owen for uh, sharing their knowledge, but also sharing their take on how to manage expectations, but also put your CDP tracking and performance to a higher level, even within the C-suite uh, uh, sphere. And i like to thank my, the attendees for attending and listening in and looking at our presentation and uh, we'll see you next time bye thank you bye bye